uh, look ahead uh, to some of the key games of the weekend. Greg, thank you for the time. What's good? Stay in, uh, in your state, in Alabama, because almost everyone has said this is not going to be much of a game for Alabama. They said that last year, too, and were wrong. But I know, I know I'm going to make you be creative here. Uh, if, you, if I said you have to give me a reason why A&M would win the game and what has to happen uh, realistically, could you come up with one? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, this would be a situation where Alabama would kind of have to lose it more than A&M could potentially win it. Like Alabama would have to make some mistakes. Uh, right now, Paul, I'm just I'm just not really convinced that AM's offense is going to be able to do enough to put strain on Alabama's defense uh, over the course of 60 seconds. Exact same conversation last year. I came on this show, told you on a Monday, said, man, I don't think this game's going to be close. Uh, didn't think it was. Based on how AM was playing going into the game, they had stunk it up against Arkansas. They'd stunk it up against Colorado, and they hadn't blocked very well. They just hadn't really done a whole lot leading up to that game against Bama. And then, sure enough, Jimbo pulls out all the right stops, created all the best matchups, and his quarterback played phenomenally well en route to a massive upset. So uh, what I would say is that AM's always capable because they have great personnel um, and they have great players. The problem is these players are just really young, and the execution – this has not been there at any point of the season. Now, this will be their Super Bowl, uh, and I would be surprised if they didn't play their best game of the year, but I'd also be surprised if their offense can put up more than, say, 21 to 24 points against a defense that's been consistently good all season long. And the only time they really played poorly was really for about a quarter, at the end of the second quarter through midway through the third, three quarters of the way through the third uh, there last week. So this defense has been really good for Bama, and I would anticipate – uh, a difficult game for AM's offense to try to find themselves in a game like this. Listen, I don't know. Maybe you do what the real situation is, is with Bryce Young, but assuming he plays, what what difficulties will he have? What imp what kind of impediments will there be with this AC joint sprain? Well, Paul, I, I can't speak to an AC joint sprain. Uh, I did, however, have an SC joint sprain, a little different, obviously. Uh, the SC joint, for those that are on radio, I'm pointing to it now. It's where the clavicle connects to the sternum. Um, it's basically right below your Adam's apple, and you can kind of feel it right there. Mine popped forward, and I was actually able to play. It's the same injury that Quinn Ewers suffered against Alabama, uh, a couple weeks ago. I was able to play through it, though, because mine popped forward. And it's 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 challenging, though. An AC joint is more towards the outside of your arm uh, where, you know, you're close to your rotator cuff in that vicinity. What I can speak to is the impact that it had on me being able to drive the football down the field and drive the football with great velocity. Uh, it's difficult to do so without pain. These are also things that are difficult to get worse. Now, I can't speak as much to the AC joint, but my first conversation with my doctor when I was going through this back in high school with the SC joint was, one, can it get worse? If the answer is no, perfect, move along. Two, how do we deal with the pain? And the answer at that point was to shoot it up. Uh, so I shot it up and was able to play through it, but it still had an impact on my ability to really drive the football. Uh, if Bryce Young, for whatever reason, can't drive the ball like he's used to, then you might have to look in a scenario where is a 80% Bryce Young as good as 100% Jalen Milrow? And the answer to me is no. I think Jalen Milrow is capable enough to be able to create a lot of issues in the run game. And I think he's a good enough thrower, not going to be the accurate thrower that Bryce Young is, not going to have the nuances that Bryce Young has. But I think if Bryce Young is sitting there at 70, 75 percent, um, you're not really doing the team any favors at that point. You might be better off going with the guy that's 100 percent that might be different uh, with how you can attack the opposing defense, but a guy that still creates challenges for the opposing defense with his speed and explosiveness. So uh, I think it'll be something they'll monitor closely throughout the course of the week, but I'd also be really surprised if Bryce Young is at 100 percent. Uh, this weekend as well. My sprain took about three weeks, and uh, hopefully for Bryce it won't be that long, knowing who's coming up on the schedule. Greg, I want you to address the shooting up 
uh, for, as a fan, it, it, we just assume, okay, you know, you know, you get shot up, you're fine. But there's more to it than that. What's it like, and, and what do you feel, and and how long does it last? Um, you, you can shoot it up, Paul. It's a great question. I think a lot of people are kind of afraid to talk about it, um, just because it. You know, we all have the, you know, the visuals of Varsity Blues in, in your mind where, you know, you know, John Voigt's telling, you know, the, the star quarterback, hey, shoot it up, shoot it up. You know, it's like it's not really like that. You know, it's, it's more along the lines. You have a great conversation with your doctor. In my, in my case, it was Dr. Lyle Kane, uh, who I respect as much as anyone in the field of orthopedics. Um, I got shot up twice in, in my career. Once in the SC joint, once in my ribs prior to the national championship game, it deadens it a little bit, uh, but you can still feel the pain and you can still feel, um, you can still feel restriction. Depending on where it's at, you still feel restriction. For instance, you don't feel, it's not like you shoot it up. It's like, oh man, I'm back to normal. No, it's not really that way. You just don't feel like yourself still, but it does take away the sharpness of the pain uh, in the event in which you get hit straight on to the injury itself. So. Um, it, it's, it's not what I think a lot of people realize it to be. Um, but it does give you a little bit of peace of mind too, as a player, knowing you're doing everything you can to try to feel as normal as possible. You're not going to feel normal. It's not going to feel hundred percent, but it, it does help a little bit with some of the things that, that could potentially arise throughout the course of the game. You'll be deadened for about probably four or five hours or so. I don't recall exactly how long it lasts. Um, I was always sore after the game and the spot where I got shot up or, you know, any other spot. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how long it lasts, but it does give you peace of mind as a player to be able to cut it loose uh, when mentally you might not be able to do so, knowing the pain that might be created by cutting it loose without the shot. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.